please welcome to the stage General Manager of Networking at the Linux Foundation, Arpit Joshi Pura. All right, very good. Welcome, and I know uh, you have survived the onslaught of some deep technical sessions over the last two days. So really appreciate all the, uh, all the feedback we have been receiving in terms of the quality and, and discussion. So thank you. Uh, keep the feedback coming. Uh, and of course, thank you to the folks on the web. Sorry you can't meet people, but you know, hundreds of you watching. Um, but of course, we're going to save the best for last, right? And, and, and today we have a fantastic treat for you. So I know a couple of years, three years ago, we started this journey on you know, how, do, how do standards and open source collaborate? And it is you know, a rare moment that we have a collaboration that is so vast that I have received an exception on how the best practices of panels are done. Right? They normally tell you don't, don't put more than three or four. Like, we're going to run out of chairs. And we have two more standards organizations that we couldn't fit. You know, we might have gone over fire code. I don't know. But let's call on the stage uh, the amazing panel. Come on in. All right, and uh, as they come in, I want to also say that you know we have Etsy ZSM, Klaus here, we have Oran. Again, we can, we can just have a deep session here. Phil is our open source uh, networking uh, uh, lead, and he will be moderating the panel, and I'll, I'll, I'll hand it to you. But before we do that, I would say this is a historic moment. This is worth a picture. Right? I mean, look, uh, can we get that slide over that shows the pictures? Uh, there you go. Look at that. Look at who is represented, and then, you know, I think we have to thank ourselves. We have come a long way. So give a big round of applause to the panel, and I'll hand it over to Phil. Thanks, Arpit. Good morning, everybody. Thank you very much for joining us in this session. Uh, personally, I can remember when uh, in 2013 we started Open Daylight, 2014 we started OPNFV, and users started to ask the question, well, gee, if we're making all of this software uh, for our next generation of platforms, what is the role of, of standards with regard to that? Mm -hmm. And that really sparked a discussion, or maybe some might call it a debate, um, on what that role was. And since both organizations are really collaborative in nature, by their definition, uh, we started to try to work together. And as that began, we recognized pretty quickly that um, the governance of these organizations are different. How you're a member, how you participate, uh, the way you treat intellectual property is different, um, and even the whole development ideology right, of how you attack an interoperability problem. Standards typically look at things very holistically. Uh, open source projects in more of an agile fashion, they kind of fix the interoperability problem as they hit it. Right, so we had some pretty significant hurdles when we started trying to work together back in those days. Um, but by what you see here on stage, we've actually overcome a lot of those hurdles with uh, different standards organizations over these last few years. And so uh, we're going to talk about some of those highlights here in this session, and then we've got a longer session at 11.10 where we're going to get more into the details of exactly how that was done and what happened. All right, but with that, I'd like to uh, have my panelists introduce themselves, talk a little bit about you know, who they work for, as well as the standards organizations and open source projects they've worked with. So Bill, you want to start us off? Yeah, thanks, Phil. Uh, Bill Carter, I'm with the Open Compute Project Foundation. We're an uh, uh, open source hardware foundation focused on uh, hardware for the uh, data center. Um, we've, uh, we were kind of a late comer to the game in terms of, of open source organizations. So we had the benefit of learning from some of these other organizations and being new and small, we, we, we knew we needed to uh, collaborate with, with the standards bodies. And so from very early on, we, we embraced um, a lot of the, the standards bodies uh, for hardware. So uh, we think of, of those as ingredients to our platform. And those ingredients come from the PCI SIG 
comes from uh, DMTF or SNIA, comes from some of the storage organizations and work groups, the T10, the T13 work group, uh, just to name a few. So we've, we've been very good at trying to embrace those organizations and, and work with them and recognize that, uh, that, that we think of them as an ingredient uh, provider. Um, and we also work with other organizations at the platform level, uh, again, trying to be efficient. We don't want to replicate uh, uh, work effort, and so we've worked with the, some of the Linux Foundation uh, projects, OPNFV, and, and collaborated on, uh, on some POCs and, and uh, technology development. Uh, we're, we're constantly uh, talking with the TIP organization and understanding you know, what they're doing uh, and what we're doing just to make sure that we're not you know, replicating that effort. Um, so those are just a couple of other examples. Yeah. Thanks, Bill. Turn it over to you. Thanks, Bill. Axel, Axel Klauberg, uh, in my day job working for Deutsche Telekom's T-Systems, and in my night job, uh, chairman of the board for the Telecom Infra Project, uh, TIP was uh, started a little bit more than three years ago. Um, actually, looking at OCP and the success of OCP, uh, we felt we can actually apply the open hardware concept to the overall telco infrastructure. And, uh, well, it's a little bit more challenging if you look at the overall telco infrastructure, especially due to intellectual property and uh, patents you need to watch out for, especially when you're looking at uh, IPR poisoned areas like uh, mobile. Um, and I have to admit, it's very tempting when you form a new organization you think, hey, I'm strong, I want to show, we can do it, and we do everything ourselves. But honestly, that model is not working. If we look at us as, as operators, we have an extremely limited set of skilled resources in this mm -hmm. space. Mm -hmm. And I mentioned this on stage in my keynote at ONS Europe last September. We have to avoid a competition between the various organizations. We have to collaborate among the organizations here and I think a good example, uh, the announcement we did uh, just this week, uh, together with uh, the Open Networking Foundation, the collaboration between uh, TIPS, Open Optical, uh, Packet Transport Group, and ONF, and we, we're going to see some more um, back in uh, uh, September last year. I wanted to make one announcement that was the collaboration between Linux Foundation and Oran. Uh, <laughs> now, we did it this week. so. And I think you're going to see more also around the radio space. Each organization has a specific strength. Obviously, I see Linux Foundation as set in open source. I see TIP with a strength on the hardware side, on the system integration side. ORAN, another example, strength on the architecture side. And we have to work together, and we will work together. Very good. Thank you. So I'm Pierre Gauthier, I'm the Chief API Architect of the Telemanagement Forum. Uh, in that regard, we are involved in uh, uh, many projects uh, with uh, a number of SDOs, but we also publish a lot of our material in the open source. We have published up to uh, 55 APIs uh, so far in the open source. We're looking at uh, publishing uh, uh, a, a number of uh, what we call uh, data models on the open source uh, would be easily consumable by, by the developer and so on. We are, uh, we'll publish in May uh, the NAS component suite, the Network as a Service component suite. So we, the TM forum is, is, is actively involved in, in delivering to the open source. Uh, we also are committed uh, to our membership to work with uh, uh, other SDOs, uh, the MEF, Etsy, you know, uh, ONAP. Uh, our members are actually developing on, uh, uh, within or on top of uh, the different projects uh, using uh, our assets, some integration reference points. So we are completely committed and we really believe that uh, it's through this uh, open source collaboration that we can accelerate uh, the development of the solution. Yeah. Thank you. Very good. Ala? Uh, so I'm Ala Goldner, and I am Director of Technology Strategy and Standardization for MDOCS. So my standardization career actually started back in 2005 from FreeGPP and IETF, and now I'm also an open source ever since on a plunge. 
I'm a technical steering committee member and the use case subcommittee chair. In parallel, I am participating in free GBP and that's the work, not only I, but also people working with me internally, because clearly there is a lot of work to be done and one person cannot accomplish all of that. Now, I see the collaboration between standards and the open source as an ongoing activity, actually going in both direction. You know, some examples may include free GPP study and then now even work item on integration of network management with ONAP and on the opposite side, ONAP integrating Etsy standard TMF APIs, as you've mm -hmm. mentioned mm -hmm. already. The, the same now, we are actively working into cooperation, also between the different open sources. As we talk now, there is a meeting of Ukraine group discussing actually collaboration with ONAP. So these two things really go together and we find same people doing, the, doing both Absolutely. things on both sides. So mm -hmm. uh, it is a very interesting journey. It, it is not a long journey of open source and standards going together, but it, I think it is progressing very well. Very good. Thanks, Ella. Pierre? Hello. Uh, my name is Pierre Lynch. I'm lead technologist with Ixia, which is now part of Keysight Technologies. Um, I'm here representing Etsy and AV ISG, which is the granddaddy of the uh, communities looking into using cloud techniques for uh, network function virtualization. But very quickly after the formation of NFV, uh, I think two years later, OPNFV came on and the, the collaboration was immediate and it was natural, uh, especially on the testing side and then it progressed from that point on as well. So that's one of the main collaborations that I see with Etsy and AV. Since then, it's expanded to other SDOs, a ton of them, 3GPP, obviously. But from an open source perspective, OPNV and now ONAP are the main ones, and also OSM, Open Source Mano. Very good. Dan. Well, good morning. I'm Dan Pitt. I'm with MEF, which used to be the Metro Ethernet Forum, but we officially changed our name uh, four years ago to the MEF Forum. Uh, we started our, our life as the uh, progenitors, really, of carrier Ethernet as a service. Uh, we've now expanded way beyond that, but we still define and certify services. Uh, we have created a, a framework under the umbrella we call MEF 3.0 uh, for lifecycle service orchestration. And in mm -hmm. this, we abstract the key important entities uh, of a telecom stack and uh, operations between operators, and so we define the certain new services at layers really one through seven, and the key uh, APIs that uh, differentiate the different uh, abstracted parts of the network, such as infrastructure control and management and service orchestration. So our goal is to promote commercial success of the industry and take advantage of the new technologies that are being pioneered mm -hmm. in these organizations, and so we have uh, undertaken a number of collaborative efforts with open source organizations. And it's also for us, like Allah said, a two-way street, but maybe not in the way you're thinking. We and our members contribute to these open source projects. We take what they do and use it to instantiate um, the concepts we have, have created. But we've also embedded and embodied the practices of open source to sort of a DevOps approach to our interface profile specifications and interface implementation specifications so that we actually issue open source versions of these prior to finalizing the specifications themselves. Mm -hmm. So we have a multi-year history of working closely with uh, projects in the Linux Foundation, in Etsy, and in odd places you wouldn't expect like the Okinawa Open Laboratory. <laughs> Very good, Dan. So continuing on with that, I'd like the panelists to, to answer the question. So what was the catalyst? What, what was the reason that you actually began to work with these open source projects? And what did you hope to gain when you began that journey? And Dan, go ahead and continue. So what we wanted to, to gain was some rapid feedback on what we were doing. We wanted some instances of these abstracted uh, notions and reference points. And the best way to get those and to get information from the experience is with the open source realizations of those. So the controller projects, the orchestration projects, the, uh, the analytics projects, they're out there. You can work with them, you can try things with them, put them behind some of our APIs and see how those function to meet the needs of those projects. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Pierre, what was the reason behind, behind that? Well, the first reason was really to, uh, you know, we wanted to provide uh, those open source APIs so that uh, the membership could uh, uh, actually use them in the open source project. That's a, 
kind of a strange answer, but basically the TM forum uh, is committing the code to the open source so that uh, folks can actually develop uh, on top of uh, own app uh, external APIs where we want to get the feedback definitely from the open source community about the quality of uh, and uh, uh, the requirements uh, uh, of those APIs, uh, along those APIs, uh, and also make them uh, consumable by uh, any parties, really, uh, including the MEF, uh, Etsy, and yeah. But we're looking at, uh, uh, we'll talk about that later, but we're looking at way more collaborative uh, development of those, those open source projects, right? So anyway, that was the first step. Yeah. Excellent, thank you, Pierre. Pierre Lynch, how about the- uh, Pierre too? Um, no, Pierre, Pierre too. <laughs> I, th to me, it's natural. The existence of the open source communities came from the fact that we were turning networking into software. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden, you had all these open source communities. That were, and the goal was, in my mind, to remove what was bad from standards organizations, meaning you never got to test what you were producing. And collaboration with open source meant that not only we didn't just throw a document over the wall and say, hey, tell us after we're done. It was an iterative thing, especially in the testing world where, where, where I'm at. Uh, it was iteratively d done during the construction of all the work items that we had. Right. So they helped us out by making sure we weren't taking the wrong direction by implementing what we were trying to do. And then secondly, we were providing ideas and standards to them that they could test. So it was really, really a two-way thing, and I think it's been fruitful. Excellent. Ala? So I actually think that the best thing which can happen to standard is to have open source implementing it for many reasons. One of them, you know, unfortunately, there are quite a few standards which are not implemented. So actually getting an open source which implement that standard gives a lot of relevancy to the standard they implement, but also to validate implementation and to have a common implementation which practically reduce all interoperability barriers because there is already someone who implements it, which is a community of a different vendors and service provider, not just some vendors going for interoperability in between them. So credibility of standard is actually assured by open source implementation. And this is what we see happening now with Etsy standard in ONAP, with TMF APIs in ONAP as well, and with free GPP network slicing, with free GPP streaming data, all these things that we now test and implement in ONAP actually say, okay guys, this implementation is for real. This implementation is going to be deployed and this is the major thing. Mm -hmm. Excellent, thanks Ala. Axel? Yeah, we want to accelerate the pace of innovation for this industry. So as part of the acceleration, what you want to avoid is reinventing wheels. Mm -hmm. And you have to work with the parties who already invented the wheel, and you have to collaborate, and we have to work in a different way. So uh, this is no longer a classical telco waterfall. It's true agile work, and uh, that requires a level of openness and collaboration and uh, it's a different way of working also in, uh, uh, together with the standards organization. And I'm a firm believer in running code. And mm -hmm. so obviously working with open source organizations, that gives you running code and is straightforward. Well, we hope that it runs anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Bill? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I could just echo what uh, Alan and, and Axel said, that uh, you know, working with the standards bodies, it, you know, we could accelerate the technology and get it to market quicker in the platforms, um, and, and that was key. Uh, the other thing that, that we've witnessed is that, um, you know, we have an end user community made up of primarily hyperscalers, mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and, and they didn't always have a, a, a voice in these standards bodies. And so at the same time, they wanted to evolve those standards. And so as much as we could adopt a standard and get it to market quickly, we also wanted to evolve it quickly. Uh, and so we, we, t we t took a advantage of having um, those, those folks, the hyperscalers, in our communities and, and talking with each other and understanding what could be done better. And then we were able to feed that back into the standards bodies. And so now it's become a two-way street between, the, between our organization and these standards organizations. And it's, they embrace it, they appreciate our feedback, and, and we appreciate what, what we get from them. 
All right, very good. Thanks, Bill. So, uh, Ala, I'm going to direct the next question for you to start. Um, I'd like you to talk a little bit about what you find to be the, m the most significant successes that you've seen working between uh, open standards bodies and open source. But at the same time, you know, don't be afraid to talk about challenges. Right? Uh, ONAP living in a world where it's trying to be compliant with Etsy Mano while not <laughs> is, is one of the things we're working through. Right? So, so talk a little bit about both successes and where you see that we, we've got more work to do. Yeah, so I've mentioned already those which I consider successes. So some of uh, SOL interfaces implementation, SOL 2, SOL 3. Now there is an ongoing SOL 5 implementation and on the, some of TMF APIs uh, for ordering, for inventory. Uh, these are successes. Also free GPP, again, we are doing a lot of work on network slice inside for modeling based on free GPP, uh, 5G standards actually. Uh, this goes well. Well, unfortunately, as, as you've mentioned, we have that ongoing discussion what should be implemented, which results both from service providers' requirements, not all of those standards which are already implemented are required and required urgently, and because of lack of resources, right? We don't have resources to implement everything, so we do get the requirements that more is needed. So this is where perhaps things fall uh, apart a little bit, but I don't think that anyone, you know, blocks it. It has probably a matter of time uh, until we get there, but we are on that way. So as I said, we do have already quite a few implementation and we plan to implement more. Now, I would actually, you know, as something which uh, may go bad, I would mention perhaps an integration or harmonization between ONAP and OSM, which are two open source, and we started some harmonization effort. And again, right now it fall apart probably because of lack of resources, probably because there is no strong push yet from service provider side, and this is the trigger which moves us forward in open source, obviously, and I hopefully that will be proceeded as well. Now, the big uh, effort which I see currently starting and ongoing is interaction between ONAP and Zero Touch, the same, Etsy is the same group, and Klaus Martini actually is chair is also in this room, and this week we had a very good discussion with them, and we will have a more discussion also today, and we are starting an activity to see how uh, Etsy's at the same architecture can be mapped uh, with on a preference architecture, and perhaps identify gaps and, 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 and go forward jointly, actually, by identifying also their architecture along with on and what we achieved with on So these are big things that I would mention. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thanks, Ala. Pierre? Yes, I think we have been uh, quite successful in implementing uh, uh, ext what we, uh, we would call external APIs or um, the uh, NBI, I believe, APIs, uh, the TM Forum APIs, and uh, uh, on top of ONAP. And uh, we're really looking at uh, uh, way more uh, uh, work in that space. That's uh, something that is uh, 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 coming. Uh, as far as ONAP is concerned. Otherwise, the TM Forum APIs in the open source are implemented by a very large number of uh, organizations and other SDOs, and we'd like to use ONAP as a, as a catalyst for further evolution of our APIs. I'm kind of following up on the fact that uh, through open source, we get more requirements, we get more quality, yeah? And, uh, um, provide uh, artifacts that are uh, even more useful for our membership. Very good, thanks, Pierre. Axel, what do you see with uh, TIP working with both open source as well as other standards bodies? Um, the successes as well as where do you see the challenges? What, what do you think needs yeah, to be Yeah, let, me start, let mm -hmm. me start with the challenge maybe. Uh, this industry, so the taiko industry is blessed with very simple standards, isn't it? Does anyone <laughs> believe we have uh, simple standards in our industry? No, probably not. So we are facing utterly complex standards still. Right. And uh, that is one of the challenges uh, also for open source, because why don't you find uh, a handful of open source IMS or EPC implementations? Because the standards are indeed fairly complex. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want to reinvent how you're building telco infrastructure, you need to think first how you can simplify. And uh, I think that is uh, what we have to address. And uh, here, the, the collaboration with uh, OCP, I think, is a, it's an excellent example. Uh, rethinking how things were done and then moving forward. Um, I think also, looking outside of my tip role, 
I was also for some time representing DT in the LFN board. Uh, I, I still believe ONAP is, is a great uh, proof for success in this industry that really the operators, the vendors came together here mm -hmm. and were working on one open source solution because uh, how many open source solutions in this space uh, a telco can afford? Yeah, so uh, I think that is still uh, a great uh, success point for the industry. Very good, thanks. Bill? Yeah, I, I think we have a, you know, a couple of challenges. Um, you know, we, we have a lot of options and there's a, you know, a lot of different open source projects that, that spawn off um, and you know, there's a lot of overlap there. There's, even on the hardware side, there's different overlaps and different uh, other you know, organizations. Um, and I think the challenge that we have uh, as, as you know, um, leaders in the, the open source community is to, um, you know, wherever possible, is to avoid those overlaps and to reach out to these other organizations and, and choose to, to work together rather than work separately. Um, you know, uh, Klaus used the example, or I'm sorry, actually used the example of, uh, of uh, ONAP, and, and that's a, a good example where you have, you know, a, a, a good, uh, you know, application there, and if you can get everybody working on that one application, you, you can just accelerate that but so much, so much faster. Um, and, you know, we see the same thing on, on the hardware side. Um, you know, we recently launched a, a new uh, network interface card standard. And, um, and, and, and if you look over the years, there's a lot of proprietary little adapter cards um, that have been available and, and you know, uh, ODMs and OEMs and companies have built their own standard, have built their own card. And, you know, after six or eight years of, of going down this path, we finally got everybody together and, and, we, uh, and we came up with uh, what it was our third generation spec, um, but we had 12 companies uh, come together and author it. And, you know, it took uh, nominally eight years if you look at the three generations. But once we all got together in the room and, and worked on one thing and, and really had a commitment that that is going to be the, the standard, you know, the, mm -hmm. the, the de facto standard we're going to use and, and we're going to make it work. And it may not be perfect, but it's good enough. And, and there was this commitment to see it through and to implement it and adopt it. And the standard, the, the, the final version was, was finalized at the beginning of the year. We, we had our summit a couple of weeks ago. Um, dozens and dozens of different designs are now already showing up with this, with this new card. Right. Um, we, we had to borrow some, some underlying technology and IP uh, from the PCI SIG. And, and again, they recognized that, that was, what we were doing was a good thing. It was being done in, within a collaboration in the open source community um, and, they, and we could use some of their tools for test and validation. And so, Excellent. you know, we, we, we engaged in this conversation and, and didn't know how to, didn't know where we were going to go, mm -hmm. but we, we, we walked down that path together and we figured out, you know, how we could share. And, Very good. And it resulted in a, you know, a great product. Cool. Thanks, Bill. Dan? Successes so, and challenges. So I have a, 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 an example of a successful collaboration, and then I also have my favorite collaboration. They're not the same. <laughs> so I think the successful one is where we've worked mostly with ONAP and Open Daylight to uh, get agreement on some of the use cases, starting with carry Ethernet, Ethernet, and some of the APIs. And our APIs essentially build content um, into the TM Forum AP, API templates. Uh, both the north-south and legato north from ONAP and, and, and presto southbound from open daylight, but also east-west in Sonata and increasingly interlude between operators. And this has given us good feedback, but more importantly, it's given our members a chance to instantiate and trial real live service concatenation between operators. Mm -hmm. Now, I think my most, success, my most favorite, my favorite one is uh, one that's not been wholly successful, but it's been the most instructive, and that's the collaboration in information modeling. So we've worked with ONAP, with IETF, with OIF, with ONF, and with Etsy. Um, 
And we kind of had it out one day in Los Angeles a couple years ago. A number of people in the room, Dung Ling Lee and others, were in, in there that day. And ONAP had a deadline, and they needed a release, and they needed some information models, and we have to agree mm -hmm. on these. But you know, we also wanted them to be long-lived and, uh, and architecturally perfect, and you couldn't have both. But the, the deadline of an open source release forced us to come to a compromise of what we could live with for now. And as Bill says, better is the enemy of good enough, and we had to go with good enough. Excellent. Thanks, Dan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I at, at the Etsy level, uh, Etsy at a V global level, I think Ala addressed the, the challenges there very well between the solutions group and the APIs and, and coming together on that. So I won't mention that again. Uh, on the test level, and by the way, I keep focusing on tests because I chair the test and open source working group at Etsy and a V. Uh, it's been a little bit more blue, sh blue skies and sunshine, honestly. It's, it's been a ton of success. And, and I, I'll, I'll mention two. The first one that I love is the co-located plug fest that we had less than a year ago, where we got people from Etsy and people from, uh, from OP and FV uh, all together in the same place. And that meant that they could, figure, they could watch how we do interoperability events, and then we could join all their project meetings and, and be less intimidated by the cool people getting stuff done at the open source level. The second uh, success that I love is uh, uh, OP and FV was seeing difficulties in repeatability of results for benchmark, network benchmark testing. That triggered a, a work item in, uh, at, at Etsy test where we basically did one of the most important works I've ever seen is we modernized how to do uh, network benchmarking in a virtualized shared platform world mm -hmm. because uh, the old specs simply didn't hold up. I'll talk in more detail about that in the next session later on, but I think those two are very, very good success. Very good, very good, thanks Pierre. So yeah, uh, again, uh, if you have questions and that's, you've been spurred from this discussion, or if you want to learn a little bit more about how the sausage has been made, and we'll get, I'm sure, more into challenges, uh, please join us at the 1110 session. Uh, we have more opportunity to go much more deeply into these topics. Um, and with that, please uh, help me in thanking our wonderful panelists. Thank you.